Hi right, guys, how are you going? Uh, Wayne with Living With Bikes. We're, um, it's during the week now, so on the weekend we went out for our ride with our GoPros and we uh, give the bikes a run and all that sort of stuff in the bush. So this week we're getting them ready to do our desert crossing. Um, so this is the less glamorous side of, I guess, motorbikes, whatever you want to call it. And some people, I guess, just ride their bikes and when they're ready for a service or whatever they just put them into the shop and say get them ready um, which is really great to be able to do that right up until the point when you're stuck in the middle of the desert and your mate says my bike won't start or i think i've ingested sand or whatever the case might be that's when you need to know a bit about your bike so as you know with us we're always buggerizing around with our bikes doing something so I'll just give you a quick rundown. I guess this is sort of like a lead into what we're going to do. There we go, it's your eye. This is a lead into what we're going to do for our desert crossing. It gives you a little bit of insight into how we prepare and stuff like that. So anyway, just a quick one tonight. Um, I am doing air cleaners on my bike, and Mark has just finished putting new handle grips on his. Um, they were getting a bit clapped out. So anyway, I'll just show you quickly what we're doing. And it, as I said, it's a lead up to our trip that we're going to do. Uh, what is it? Not this week and coming, but the following, isn't it? So a fortnight. Fortnight. Yeah. Oh, 10 days. <laughs> 10 days, yeah, 10 or 9 days. So, Alright, so here we go. This is what I'm doing. So tonight, I basically, on the DR650, air cleaner lives in here. Um, can you, are you able to hold that up, please, Mark? So these are the air cleaners, it's still a bit wet, but they're the air cleaners we use, and we call them por porcupines for obvious reasons, uh, and they're reusable, so uh, we clean them out, put them in degreaser, wash them all out, and reuse them, so that's what they're there for. Um, okay, so that's what um, that hole there for is, has the thing in it. The other thing that we do, which um, you can do, or you don't have to do, whatever you want, I stuff all that available area with um, dishcloths, and you might go, what? what are you talking about? So when my porcupine goes in there, my air cleaner, all these cloths here all sit around the side of it. They don't really um, impede on any of the suction, but they do carry the, that microfiber type dust away um, and keep it out of the engine, which is, you know, for... Um, dusty areas like what we were at last weekend or um, you know desert crossings with a lot of fine sand um, it can make a difference now yep so all I'm doing now is I'm just checking these this is my battery holder just to make sure that everything's locked down in its right positions there we go Okay, so that's all good. Um, I've got a few little things I'm doing just to check. And then um, we will basically put this, these bikes in mothballs uh, until we go, which is, like I said, it's only another 10 or so days. A couple of little things I've got to do up front. I want to change my... That's one of my holders. It carries my phone. I've got to redo that. Um, but that's about all up there. I carry the mirrors, I keep them on because um, I like to be able to see when the guys are behind me, especially if Mark's behind me, um, I like to see when he falls over. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so Mark put these new grips on, were they, well they just, you got them from Kawasaki didn't you? Grips is grips. Yeah, grips is grips, well, actually they feel pretty good, you shouldn't slide off those things. Yeah, they're quite, quite nice to feel, and they're fairly soft as well. Yeah. They're not like a hard rubber. So yeah. Like Mark said, grips are grips. So it doesn't matter the brand and all that. Um, you've still got to do your air cleaner and bits and bobs, haven't you? Just the air cleaner. Just the air cleaner. And yeah, there's another little filter on a DR650, which I will show you. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. If I can get it out of this jar. Got my hand stuck in there now. Anyway, it's in there. Can you see that filter in there? No, you can't. Can you get your little girl hands in there and get the... Oh, sure. nice. Thank you. Nice of you to clean my filter. Yeah. Alright, so what we've got here, these are... These are a, um, 
a filter that goes in the breather pipe which sits right there on the DR650 and it's actually important where that where that filter sits if, it's, if you try and sit it up in the air here for some reason it sucks away it from sucks it. away um, from where it should be so they always need to tuck down in there I'm like oh that seems stupid but it's just the way they are so they need to tuck down in there and if you do that you'll have no trouble so that filter and the main one pineapple are the two that we make sure that we've cleaned um, and we will obviously probably drain the fuel on these because they've been in there a while oh, we did run them up the bush we'll just probably fill them back up again but they'll get a full tank and what we'll do is this weekend we'll fill them up to the top and then we let them sit for the week with a full tank of fuel they will expand over the week and then we will top them up with another couple of litres so that's how we do it. Now that's the maximum we can get into them. Alright guys, well as I said, just a short quick one. Just letting you know what we're up to. Getting ready for the um, the big desert crossing. Alright, catch you later. Bye. Alright, we're back again. We had a bit of tea and we're back out. Um, we had a beautiful race. We do have a nice race actually. Thanks very much Trish. Um, <laughs> Thanks Trish. I'm just going to quickly show you before I put the cover back on what my how I do my air cleaner. So here we go. So I to sit here. I use the thing. So that that just tucks around, just gently tucks around in there. And if there's any moisture gets in there, that will actually take it. But it also takes the fine dust, so the pineapple doesn't have to deal with it quite so much. And I do have the cutouts in the top. Some say that, um, as you can see, we're off, off somewhere again. So this weekend we're travelling up to near Mildura for a crossing across a desert. Um, it's the Australian Day weekend, so it's a long weekend for most people. And uh, and we're just heading up. It's uh, What time is it, fellas? Quarter past seven. Quarter past seven, Friday morning. And we're heading up to a little place called Haddock. And from there we will unload, as you can see we'll put the bikes on, from there we'll unload and we will start our crossing. It's going to be quite hot this weekend, so we've taken that into account, um, we've put in a few, um, a few, um, what's the word I'm looking for? A few, uh, it's early, what do you want? It's too early in the morning, I've put in a few things where if we get caught out, we can um, I mean, go and we... get refuge in somewhere cooler. It's basically up around the 40s to mid 40s so that, that gets pretty hot. Yeah, we've booked the Pinaru Hotel. <laughs> we've booked the Pinaru Hotel, there you go. So we'll see how we go. But anyway, come along. We should have a good uh, a good ride. I've got myself, Mark and Lucas. So it's um, a motley crew and we've got the two DRs and um, the DR400, DRZ400 in the middle there. We're just hoping that they don't argue on the way up, but they seem to be friends so far. Anyway guys, um, I don't know what else. we will uh, catch you further up the road, and you'll obviously see us when we're unloading and stuff like that and getting ready to head off. So until then, see ya. Alright, the madness before we head off, we've uh, made it to Hatter, and um, we're all starting to get ready now, loading the bikes up. Mark's running around naked, as usual. In his Calvin. It usually takes him like two minutes to work out that he can get naked. But he has got knee pads on, so if anyone, um, you know, you can't say we're not doing safety first. Correct. I've started packing up my stuff. Luckily it's, uh, it's about 34 degrees. Here's the old famous sign. Right here. <coughs> And it's quite a busy place actually. Alright, let's have a look. So you've got all the different posts here. <coughs> Singapore, we won't make that far. Broken Hill's not bad, 360. Cairns, Sydney, Hobart. Alright, so where's the sign? There you go. Hatter Roadhouse. Just speaking to the owner before. Seems to be a really nice fella. Said that uh, if we get back and we're that hot and bothered, he's given us three rooms that we can use. Um, we've got like uh, workers, 
um, AFCO huts out the back here and they're all air conditioned and stuff. I found a bit of a tree for the Commodore to sit under so she'll be okay. <coughs> yeah so there's the AFCO huts over there. They're all air conditioned so if we get back and we need a we need a cool place um, yeah we can go and jump in them which is fantastic. All right well We'll, uh, we'll keep kicking on, getting packed up, and then we'll see you when we're on the road. Catch you then. Hey! Um, and that'll give us... We've only got about, about 8, 10 k's and then we're turning off anyway. Alright, let me have a look at me. God, you're good looking. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, we've um, we've just got onto the... I'm pretty sure this is the Noing. Noingi. Noingi? No, no, it's actually the... Oh, here it is, the Noingi. This is the big sign over Yeah, there's a big sign over here. Noingi. So this is the Noingi trial, tr track. And um, this will basically lead us through the gypsum mine and on to Rocket Lake. So, and we've only just come off the highway. The highway is basically over there, not very far at all. But what happened was, as we come off, we started on this dirt road, we, um, we heard a couple of noises. You can't see it at the moment, but it was chopping the inside of Lucas's tyre out. And up in there, it's drilled a big hole through his plastic thing. So, in true style, we decided to uh, stop under a shady spot and uh, we'll fix it. Mark's having a read. So a great big water storage. That's a big water storage there. Which big was big concrete pit and they just, just out there. Tin over the top of it. There you go. Alright, well we'll get this motorcycle fixed up and then we'll come back to you. See ya. She's pretty barren countryside, that's for sure. Feed in a fair bit then. Mind you, I was pulling up a pretty steep hill. Make sure I don't lose my glove. Yeah, I reckon there's been, mind you, I, can't, I can see like there's tracks out here from like a tractor or something. But I can't really see, like, it hasn't been grading. Another gate.
Hey? Nah, God no, no, we're two. Long way to go yet. I think we'll be stopping for a minute to fix up Mark's bags. I don't know. They weren't. They weren't at their car, though. No, I looked inside. There was no one in there. Yeah. It's all right. We'll be here for a minute. We've got to fix up Mark's bags. One of mine's coming a bit loose. That's not too bad. Those tracks, is it? Yeah. There's a little bit of sand. A little bit of. Um... Well, as long as, you know, as long as nature can make you happy. Well, that's Alright, we're going to switch the cameras off for a minute and we'll come back to you when we've got Mark sorted out. Alright, have a look at all this. We've just stopped for a little bit. We were going to park under a tree. But there's a slight problem. There isn't under any. Trees. Would you believe, over there, Straight in front of where the camera's pointing, there's a there's a sheep standing there looking at us. Solitary sheep. One solitary sheep. He's probably saying, "What are those blokes doing on three motorbikes?" Well, that's what it's like. I mean, there is trees in the distance and stuff. And if you want to know if it's sandy, there's no bitumen highway. Well, it's not bad to ride on actually. Oh look, sheep poo. Mark, you're the poo, you're the poo uh, expert. Not fresh. Taste that, what do you reckon? Not fresh. Not fresh? You already had a bit? Yeah. Alright, so we're just having a bit of a, a bit of a drink and a rest. The old, old sugars are going well. Which is a dry and dusty old place out here, that's for sure. Alright, so we're at the hopper. Made it to the hopper. Which is quite good. This is one of the instruments they used to, when they were mining the gypsum. They put it all, I don't know how they got it up there, but. Yeah, piece of old history. As the years go by, it slowly just became. That's just about to come out and see it now. Ah. I mean, all the stilt structure is still there. Look at that sky. Well, while I'm sitting here waiting, um, I've had one fall today. Just, I was in a sandy track, but it just grabbed me, and um, I was in a position where I couldn't really get on the throttle quick enough, and um, it crushed from one, little, one track into another track, and it just washed me out. So I went down, I twisted my, my leg quite bad, but I can tell you the only thing that stopped my leg from probably getting broken was the fact that I'm wearing my Tech 3 boots. Um, they, uh, they probably saved me from getting a broken ankle. Yeah, I think I can see that bike coming. Is that a bike? Yep, definitely one bike. Hopefully two. So, alright. We'll catch you at camp. There then. Good morning from Rocket Lake. Um, we got in last night. Uh, it was about probably 8.30, still light. And we pretty quickly set up, knowing that once the sun goes over the hill, it gets dark real quick. Anyway, we'll show you again our little camp and how it looks like it tr it's been trashed this morning. It's because we're messy. Here you go.
We're all just getting ready. I've, ha I've had a cup of coffee and a bit of breakfast. Had a couple of snack pack things. That was my little setup last night, and we didn't even um, put our covers over our tents, as you can see. You can see straight through mine. No, because it was, um, I can't remember how hot it was, but she was pretty warm until about 2 o'clock in the morning. And then I heard Mark coming out looking for his sleeping bag because he was cold. Mark's little, I don't know what you call that, little Tough. campus coffin. <clears throat> How are you feeling this morning, Mark? All right? Yeah, good, mate. Good morning, everyone. I'm sick, sick of stamina for breakfast. Oh, beautiful. This is actually a road, as you can see. I don't know if you can sort of make it out, but it's like a just a road coming into the little campsite. And when we got here yesterday, Mark put his tent up in the middle of the road. This is him. You'll wake up in the middle of the night with a full drive bull bar for you, somewhere to hang your clothes on. But anyway, he moved it over there. Lucas has got his um. Little swag. Is that's not is that your normal one or is that like a littler one? That's a biker swag. That's a biker swag. So it's actually designed. So what's it called? Oh it says June four wheel drive. That's the brand. That's the brand. Okay. That's Yeah, biker's one. Very good. And where is it, Lucas? Where's your friggin' fan? Up the front here. Oh, there it is. Oh, shit. Hang on, I'll come around. Last night, Mark and I were peacefully laying in bed, listening to the... Listening to the stars. I'll turn around. Yeah, we were listening to the stars. And then all of a sudden we hear... Whoo! Well, Lucas is in his little tent with a fan going. <laughs> huh? Mark and I said, where'd you plug that in? Is there a tree with a PowerPoint here somewhere? Is it? So that's what we could hear last night. Luckily for us, the battery started going flat. So that's just a quick walk around our camp. We thought he was having a little tickle. <laughs> we thought he had some like, you know, away from the away from the wife type sex aid toy or something that he was playing with. A little, a little me time. <laughs> a little me time. But it wasn't. <clears throat> anyway, we'll um, pack up and we'll see you on the road. All right, well, we're just about to leave Rocket Lake, or Rocket Lake Campground, anyway. We're all packed up, nothing left behind, everything's clean. We're all wearing Australia flags. You got a fucking GoPro on your head, Mark. In that case, that'll make it. There you go. <laughs> All right.
Okay, so that is, or was, the lake. And we're going to follow a track to the left, which takes us back out. Yeah. It'd be a big lake, wouldn't it? Look how big it is. It's massive. Massive thing. My GPS has picked it up now. It'd be pretty easy four wheel driving. Oh, yeah. I mean, shit, the Commodore would go down this little track, this bit. This is Murray Sunset, Rocket Lake. I think this morning we'll just take it easy, just cruise for a bit. Is that on? No, not yet. Do you want it on? Yeah, because I've hardly had it on. Oh, sorry. I can nearly reach. Oh, hang on. Oh. Hang on. I didn't want that. No, that's all right. Okay, sit on the bike again. Yeah, that should be pretty good. Now it come to me. Where's Lucas? There you go, you should be good. Is he coming? Alright, we're just waiting on Luke. Oh, here he comes. And we should be off. Shakes off, mirror set. Might sit behind the screen for a minute until it gets too hot. much talking because I'm concentrating so I'll um, catch us down the road a bit. Sometimes the middle is the best bit, best place other times either side of it. it changes all the time what am I doing now I can't tell GPS is turned up 
it, it goes like into a sleep mode so there might be a setting I'll have to look at it where it just does that to stop using if it's using its own power but I've got it plugged in so but I pretty much know by engine note um, how fast I'm going must get Sandy Lucas has rolled it off I know you won't see it on camera but my front wheels slid then for about 20 metres and very often when you get on the power the first couple of seconds you get on the power it, it slides the front wheel naturally because you've taken all the weight off it We've got sand and ruts. Cool. All right, we've just made it to. Can you remember what they call this campsite? What was the sign? Camp. No, it's got a name, but I can't remember what it is. Two of my straps are loose. Yeah, you're having a better day than yesterday. Oh, that one's completely started to let go. I'll have a look at them in a minute. All right, so it does have a drop toilet. We should, um, I'll have a look on the way out and I'll put it up. Well, my GPS has just woken up. So we're going to have a bit of a break. We'll have a bit of a break here and then we will catch you back up on the track. We're going to put the drone up in a minute and have a look and burn around. All right, we'll see you soon.
shape for it. It's over there somewhere. How the size of some of those farms? Big.
from Penaroo who's uh, spent the night in the Golden Green Hotel and uh, we had a couple of beers oh jeez mighty fine establishment but it was a really good place uh, if you're ever up this way definitely call in lovely people and uh, we had a great night a really great night and I said this morning we're in the back at the moment so we're out the back of the place Mark boy, got all his crap ready to go. I think this is all extra crap. Extra crap. He's all right and wrong. And my girl's out here. You can need a shirt collet, let me know. My crap's out here. So I'm all, this is basically that's the main street you see. That's why we're pops are we were in the back. Obviously, um, we're upstairs up there somewhere. Oh, there you go. Our rooms, my room was the second one, Lucas was the first one, Mark was the third one. So it's pretty cool. That looks like the boys are starting up. So we won't run them too long. Mark's got a, got a fucking red piece. So we'll see you out in the road. So for some reason my bike wouldn't start this morning. It's a bit of a flat battery. So it'll be alright once we get it going. Nice and early. Got to run a bit harder for a minute. Get that battery charged up. Just going to go out to the BP. Just going to go up to the BP and get some, um, get something to eat. Have a bit of, um, bit of a stock up and some drinks. Check the oils on the bikes, and then we'll head off. See how much they go down overnight? Oh, a little bit. Oh, yeah, we'll get him to check them. Yeah, it's fine.
I've pulled you out of, of enough shit in my time to. <laughs> we had to I, lift you twice. I can remember. I can remember him laying in a desert, and I had to go back and get him. I could have actually got out, but I was just. I just thought, fuck it. There's two of them here. I'm just going to lay in and let them come and get me. No, I could have got out. You died dug my way. Yeah. <laughs> I just threw him a shovel and said dig. I got out of it and he gone and I thought, oh fuck. Right? I started, I toed it and then I waved and kept going. That's why you So I'm laying on the ground and I thought, I'm just going to fuck away. <laughs> there was sand, there was my body in the sand. Hey guys, we, uh, we've made it back to the car park where we start off from and we're all packed up and girls are all back on their trailers and uh, it's starting to get really warm now so we're all back on no big issues Mark, Mark's number plate looks like it's been shot and then just hanging by a thread that was that hole there is actually a strap that he had on that let go and then punched a hole through there so you can imagine the pressure that was on that that was quite a bit of pressure to do that the cars are more just about all packed up and we will head out might just do a little safeguard on that one we'll have a look all right then guys so thanks for watching and we will see you next time we're on the road okay stay safe and live with bikes cheers <laughs>